Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Good afternoon, Bill Bryant and Barbara Bailey for WKYT as the news continues at 1230. Should Kentucky police departments be allowed to use surplus equipment from the military? That question is being asked today in front of state lawmakers in Frankfurt. WKYT's Jerrica Insko is at the state capitol with our top story at 1230. Jerrica? A lot of eyes are on the militarization of America's streets, meaning giving police departments excess military gear. Now, here in Frankfurt at the state capitol, a committee heard testimony on both sides of the issue. Now, the Kentucky General Assembly's local government committee heard testimony from both a professor at Eastern Kentucky University and a police chief here in Kentucky on the topic. The EKU professor stated he doesn't think SWAT teams and use of military equipment by police officers is unnecessary. What he doesn't agree with is the misuse and overuse of the equipment. But the Jefferson Town Police Department chief says they need the equipment from time to time. Saying military can't always respond, but first responders do and can. And those officers misusing it should be punished, not everyone. We're talking not about the militarization of policing. We're talking about the misapplication of the military model. The misapplication of the military model. My answer to that is to hold those people responsible. If they're not using the equipment properly, hold them accountable. But don't handcuff every police officer out there today who's trying to save your life and my life. The representatives did ask a few questions, but mainly only heard testimony from both of those men about the militarization of the 18,000 police departments here in this country. At the state capitol, Jerrica Insko, WKYT. Thank you, Jerrica. And the recent riots in Ferguson, Missouri, were mentioned by both men during testimony this morning at the state capitol. The funeral is underway right now for a Kentucky firefighter who was killed in the line of duty. Campbellsville firefighter Captain Tony Greider died over the weekend, a month after he was severely injured in an ice bucket challenge accident. Greider is from Columbia. He was also a member of the Adair County Volunteer Fire Department. And firefighters from across the state are in Columbia today to say goodbye to their fallen brother. We spend a lot of time together, not only the paid departments, but the volunteers. We spend a lot of time with each other, each other's families, and so you becomes very close. And when a tragedy like this happens, uh, it doesn't matter what department, paid or volunteer, and where you're from, it'll affect you. More than 100 fire trucks are taking part in Greider's processional. He will be buried with full honors this afternoon following the funeral. We are learning more about the man who was badly hurt in a hit-and-run crash at a Lexington bar. Noel Espino is a member of the Guam Army National Guard. Guard officials say he was in Kentucky with other Guam soldiers for training. Police say he was outside the beer trap on Friday night when a driver backed into him and then hit the bar. Police later arrested Jared McCargo for the crash. McCargo has been fired from his job as a Lexington firefighter. Espino is recovering at UK Hospital, where a National Guard chaplain has been staying with him and his wife. A Winchester man charged in a robbery that ended in gunfire will go in front of a judge this afternoon. Now, it happened yesterday at the 96 truck stop off Interstate 64. Police say 23 year old Curtis Wilkerson and another man who was armed with a gun went into the store and demanded money. Investigators say the store owner shot the gunman while other employees held Wilkerson until police arrived. Wilkerson is also charged with robbing a taxi driver Monday. He'll be arraigned on both cases in about half an hour. Police have not. If not identified a suspect uh, at this point, no response has been filed yet regarding a wrongful death lawsuit involving a teenager who drowned at Transylvania University. 13 year old Ricky Harris was swimming at a pool at the William T. Young Campus Center when he died back in June. He was attending an academic summer camp. His family filed a lawsuit this week against the university, as well as the camp counselor and two lifeguards. That lawsuit cites negligence and recklessness from the three as the reason for their son's death. The defendants have 20 days to respond to the clerk's office from the time they are served the lawsuit papers. A memorial service will be held tomorrow for a Kentucky woman murdered in Chile. 22-year-old Erica Hagen was found dead in her apartment earlier this month. 
The Georgetown College graduate was teaching English at a local school. Police say a security guard at the school has been arrested. Hagen is from Western Kentucky. A memorial service will be held tomorrow night in Owensboro. Another service will be Saturday in Marshall County. Georgetown College is still planning a memorial service on campus. Well, researchers are taking a closer look at teenage binge drinkers, and the rate of diabetes in the U.S. may be leveling off. An encouraging trend, certainly. Alfonso Van Marsh has details on those stories and more in this Better Living Report. The percentage of U.S. adults diagnosed with type 1 and type 2 diabetes has leveled off in recent years. That's according to researchers for the CDC who looked at data on almost 665,000 people. They speculate that diabetes rates are slowing as obesity rates slow down. Still, their findings show diabetes rates continue to rise among Hispanics and blacks. A new study from California researchers suggests pregnant women are not receiving enough genetic counseling. They looked at over 700 pregnant women. Half took part in a computer lesson about Down syndrome and other chromosome abnormalities. They also learned about the risks and benefits of an amniocentesis and were offered the test for free. Researchers found when women were informed, fewer opted for the test. And new research shows the timing between a teenager's first drink and first drunk is a risk factor for binge drinking. Previous studies have shown that teens who drink early on are at an increased risk for heavy drinking later. Now researchers at Yale and Arizona State University found the timing between having that first drink and then drinking to intoxication is also a risk factor. Those are some of today's top health stories. Alfonso Van Marsh, CBS News, New York. And we hope you keep it here on WKYT News. We have a lot more coming up. A Lexington Women's Shelter gets a new look. We'll have details about the enchanted makeover. Also, Lexington businesses are going green in 2015. How your company can play a part in helping the environment. And the Frugal stopping by to talk about stockpiling. Some great deals, uh, she'll tell us about, that you use on things every day. Not a cloud in the sky for most of us out there. And look, that's going to be the case the next couple of days. And toward the weekend, we got a bit of an issue. And I'll explain that issue and how that will affect your events, all those festivals going on. Coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris and First Alert Defender. We woke up this morning with a lot of sunshine, and guess what? We're still holding on to it. It's beautiful outside. I don't think anybody's whining about this weather. It's nice. And it's one of those things you could either go for a walk or run during the morning, afternoon, during the evening. It doesn't matter. It's just those days. I mean, we've had the past, what, four to five days. It's just been beautiful to the start to the finish. It's been gorgeous. But check this out. All right. Did you know this? Typically overnight, it's definitely not what we've been feeling. What we've been feeling there in the 40s. We even had a couple of 30s just about two or three mornings ago. Typically our overnight lows uh, there during the morning hours. Or in the mid 50s this time of year. We were nowhere near that uh, Monday, not Tuesday, and not this morning either. 43 came up in Frankfurt. That's the lowest we saw. Richmond right there at 45 degrees. Mid 40s elsewhere too, down toward the southern zones. Lexington came out at 48 degrees. And London, you see there sitting at 49. So, yeah, we're not close to it, but I will say this we have one more morning until we actually get away from the 40s. After tomorrow morning, we're back in the 50s and we're back toward average. 76 the rest of this afternoon, still plenty of sunshine. Look at these icons. You're just not going to get much out of that, which is good. I mean, we'll take it. There's a lot going on. World Chicken Festival kicks off tomorrow. That's going to be down in London. It's always a fun event, always a lot of people going out there, and also football games. Friday night football, yeah, it looks great. 73, very mild feeling. No matter where you're going, it still feels okay. Uh, and it's still one of those evenings that, hey, once the sun sets, it's not that cool. It actually will be quite mild. So all in all, we have a good couple of days on the way. Go towards Saturday. UK Vandy, fantastic weather kickoff right around 75. Uh, any tailgating going on, it'll be warmer. So you're going to be sitting there with uh, some short sleeve shirts, maybe some shorts to be uh, out there during the day. It'll be dry though, so all good. Sunday off into next week, that's when a system comes in from the south, and that'll give us that next best chance of rain. But still, it's not a great chance. So we'll be watching that very closely, but 
Seriously, we got four more days of what you see outside right now, guys. Okay, and that is hard to beat. All right, Micah, thank you. A Lexington Women's Shelter is getting an enchanted makeover. A room in Greenhouse 17 will soon be transformed. It's part of the Sacred Sewing Room Tour based on the concept that sewing saves lives. We're joined by Diane Fleet and Darlene Thomas from Greenhouse 17. Welcome. Glad to have you in here Hi, today. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, appreciate it. What is the Sacred Sewing Room Tour? Is that what you're calling it? It is. Yeah. We were chosen as one of five spots in the nation. Um, I think it aligned really well with what Enchanted Makeovers and Sacred, sacred Sewing Rooms were wanting to do. And, and it's just another way that we can, you know, bring craft and healing and um, bring some of the empowerment work that we're doing with the women. And we're already on that, on that phase of women doing some marketable goods. And so mm -hmm. we really think that the Sacred Sewing Room fits in perfectly with our program. And so talk about what it will entail. What will this mean for the women and children there? It just means that they'll have access to enhancing skills or learning new skills mm -hmm. uh, that can help with self-sufficiency of their family over a period of time. Um, the woman who created this, Terry Grawl, mm -hmm. um, reflects upon the story of her childhood and how her mother, and it really relates to myself, my mother made sewing dresses uh, to supplement income. And so this is another avenue. You know, we do products and we have farm and CSAs and flowers and commercial kitchen, and this is just another additional way mm -hmm. for, for families to capitalize on their strengths and become more self-sufficient. There you are with them in a, in a challenging uh, time in their lives, certainly. How does something like this uh, help them make improvements? You know, I think one of the things is that we often overlook is that women bring a lot of skill and a lot of talent, and I think we sometimes, re you know, relegate them to always a victimization role. And it is amazing when given opportunity and given access and being able to, you know, learn and grow and kind of think, you know, what is it that I want to do for my children and do for my family? It's amazing how they step up to it. And so I think this is another piece that says the community cares about them. Here's a, you know, here's a space that we're going to create this wonderful environment and what can you do with it? And I think it'll be astounding what we see. It's a great thing. Well, talk about what you generally see. When you see women and children come in and when you see them leave, talk about that transformation. What happens? Well, that's a perfect word. It's quite transformative. You know, you come in, you're in crisis. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You're uncertain. Um, and over a period of time, you're able to kind of empower yourself and uh, learn that you do have skills and beauty and you do have something to offer back into this community into your family and despite what you've been told or how much you've been harmed uh, you have amazing strengths and that's our job at Greenhouse 17 is to provide so many opportunities mm -hmm. that you have that you have a chance to explore the, yeah. who you want to be, who you are mm -hmm. and who you want to be and who you still are working to become. Oh, very That's re transformative. Re yeah. Rewarding work, certainly. Thank uh, to you. Do. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank getting you. us updated. And coming next, Lexington Business is making a commitment to be more environmentally friendly. Details on the Green Business Challenge next on WKYT. We're glad you're with us today. Which Lexington business will be the greenest in 2015? The race is on. Live Green Lexington is kicking off its Green Business Challenge. And Beth Olson is their outreach specialist here to tell us more about that. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate Thanks for having it. me. Sounds fun. So what is the Green Business Challenge? What does this mean? Well, the Green Business Challenge is a sustainability competition for Lexington businesses. Um, any Lexington business or organization of any size is el el eligible to compete. Um, there's something in the challenge for everybody. Basically what competitors will do is they will um, be completing activities under a variety of topics to earn points over the nine month challenge period. And then uh, whoever comes out at the end with the most points will be awarded as our overall winner. We have other awards mm -hmm. to offer as well. Beth, what are the kinds of things that uh, businesses can change that will make a difference? Um, the three main topics that we emphasize the most are waste reduction, energy efficiency, and water stewardship. Um, this challenge actually works beyond those and also encourages people to pursue alternate means of transportation, uh, work on their green purchasing practices, engage with property managers, all sorts of different subjects. Um, but it can be anything from something as simple as start recycling in your workplace to something as complex as earn lead certification for your building. So there's a broad variety of options available. So to make this happen, you received a grant? Is that right? We did. The city of Lexington received a grant. Um, it's We were one of only four cities selected nationwide, so uh, we're in with the big kids now. Um, 
It's a grant from the International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives, Office Depot, and Green Per Square Foot. And um, then we have also gotten some great support in our community from uh, Gray Bar Electric. They are offering free energy and lighting assessments for participants during the challenge. Um, and also from Closing Group, who's offering free landscaping assessments during the challenge. Do you find that when you uh, approach uh, business owners and operators uh, that they are open to the idea? Do, do you make the point to them, well, you can also save money <laughs> with this? That is a, that gets that's their a big bonus. Right? It certainly does. <laughs> Um, a lot of people are sort of on board with the idea um, but need that little extra boost uh -huh. to really start taking action. The other great thing about the challenge is that it gives some structure and direction. So if you're interested in sustainability and you just haven't known where to get started, this is a great way to kind of work your way through it. So the launch is October 2nd at the Carnegie Center, but people can still come on board after that point as well, right? Yep, absolutely. Registration is open now. Um, registration will continue to be open until February 1st, but of course we encourage everyone to get on board now. Uh, you'll have more time to complete activities and earn points if you start early. Okay, very good. Get you're good points. to come in. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. And coming next, looking for ways to save some cash, aren't we all? Well, stockpiling <laughs> tips from the Frugal coming up here on WKYT. Welcome back in. We're all looking for ways to save money. Always. We welcome <laughs> Deb Morris, the Frugal, who says one way to save is by stockpiling. Is this a good thing yeah. to do? Welcome. You know, Glad to have you. It is a good thing. I mean, you know, one of the things with uh, being frugal is uh, you always, you never pay retail. I always say that. You're always buying something on sale. Mm -hmm. So when you see that really great sale, it is not bad to mm -hmm. buy extras of them because it does stop you from and and I'm talking about things that you use every day you know the toothpaste the toilet paper the detergent the shampoo when you see good deals in that those are the ones that you should get extras for and it doesn't mean that your basement is going to be up full no, up to the ceiling no. right yeah <laughs> I mean you know I personally for a small family of four I always have like four to six so mm -hmm. I always have that backup you know because sales and don't you know say oh my gosh I didn't I have to run out and get that sale. Sales usually have a 12-week cycle. Mm -hmm. So one sale that's coming up, you're going to have another cycle back. And uh, But the one thing, when you're stockpiling, the best deals are to, you know, coupons have lost some of their, you know, gusto here. <laughs> so when you get extra deals, and right now there's a great rebate out there. There's two of them out there, and I mm -hmm. put them on your website, um, that make these six bottles of Tide that started off at $8.36, $1.69. Ooh, I'm in. Wow. That's great. <laughs> so that's a, so that's an unbelievable. The the toilet paper there, that's another thing that ends up being, it started at nine, $10, mm -hmm. and it ends up being, it was $20 for three three of those plus three of the Kleenex. And then the toothpaste is free. So really free. At Rite Aid, it's free. And coupons.com, I went there this morning, I got all the coupons that yep. match up in there, mm -hmm. and it's free. And the same thing with the, um, the shampoo and the conditioner. That's free too. I guess it goes without saying it needs to be non perishable things. I mean, yeah, right? I mean, that's what I believe. I mean, yeah. you know, it's common sense. Why does anybody need, you know, 50 bottles of salad dressing or ketchup or, you know, I mean, that's just crazy. But these things, these are things you're going to use. So, mm -hmm. you know, because you got to remember, it's going to take space too. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, um, my kids always said, don't be shoving stuff underneath my bed, but they do have toilet paper <laughs> underneath their bed. <laughs> it is. That's, I, I can't help it. You have toilet paper under your bed. That's yep. unbelievable deal. Though. Something, but just a dollar. It's a dollar sixty-nine. They're out uh, there. Yep. Great. All right. Yep. All right. You spot the deals. Yeah, Thanks it's for right coming. on your website. Right. Exactly what I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. WKYT.com for that. What a beautiful day we have going out there. Let's check in with Micah. Over and over and over again. We're going to do it again tomorrow, too, and off toward the weekend. But let's just talk about today real quick. Mild, and we're looking at a lot of sunshine. You can see it back behind me. No clouds in the skies for most. 76 degrees, you got to absolutely love it. And a good-looking evening, too. It's one of those evening backyard patio, burgers, hot dogs, whatever it may be. Yeah, knock that out. Or a nice little walk around, whatever it may be. Take off and enjoy this weather, guys. Hey, thank you, and we want to thank you for joining us for this edition of WKYT News at Noon. Our next newscast is coming up at 4. The Young and the Restless is next, followed by The Talk at 2. We hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining us.